Hey guys, so I wanted to do a video, talk a little bit about what I've been reading. Um, you know, maybe you can tell me what you've been reading. Um, seems like I'm reading a lot of comics, but I mean, I really, really dropped my pull list a lot. Uh, I went from, I think I had 106 titles. I went down to 84 titles. Now I think I'm down to like 62, which is freaking awesome. Uh, man, that's going to just be amazing. But, you know, as it is with comics, I'm constantly adding titles, so, you know, we'll see. Um, but I wanted to go through these. It's quite a few comics, so I'm going to try to just go through them all without talking a whole lot about them. But, uh, just a little bit. So, anyway, uh, first off, from Dark Horse, Harrow County number 10. I was real happy to see that Tyler Cook was back on the story. But I think that Colin Bunn co-wrote this story with someone else. But, I mean, it was cool. We got introduced to a new witch. Know that there's more witchcraft going on in Harrow County than initially we thought there was. Which was a lot. So, you know, that was really freaking cool. Uh, I read the first two issues of Dark and the Bloody. This was a whole lot like Harrow County, but opposed to Harrow County, which deals with witches, this is dealing more with, uh, more like a, um, werewolves and, uh, thunderbirds and different mythological monster type things that are going on. A little bit of, like, zombie, like, body possession thing that's going on. Uh, really, really enjoyed this story. The art on this, uh, like I said before, is uh, by Gunlowski, which does Copperhead. And the art in it was amazing. The story on this was really, really good. I would say that anybody that likes uh, Harrow County, uh, Dark and the Bloody from Vertigo was freaking awesome. I read the last two issues on Slash and Burn. Still loving Slash and Burn. Uh, Sly Spencer... Even though he changes his name like every couple of months. Writes just an amazing story. I mean, Bodies, man, just really blew my mind on what he was doing there. I'm really interested to see what he's going to do with Slash and Burn. Because every issue of that, I just can't wait for another one. Clean Room from Vertigo. Um, I was thinking about dropping Clean Room. And... Being as this is the last of this story arc, I may still drop it. I'm enjoying the story. Um, I just think that it would be something I would much rather sit down and read a whole story. Because there's a lot of confusing stuff going on in this book. A lot of it is resolved in this issue, which is cool. But there is just a lot of stuff going on in Clean Room. Survivor's Club... Uh, Survivor's Club still one of the like best horror stories that I'm reading. And based on what I just showed you, I read a lot of horror stories. Uh, really, really enjoying uh, Survivor's Club. You know, group of people that are all kind of drawn together. They're all just messed up in their own way and uh, trying to solve a mystery. Super cool. Um, be really happy when this art kind of wraps up so that we can move on to what's coming next. Uh, from Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I liked the first arc on Guardians of the Galaxy of this. This is the start of a new story. And so, honestly, really good jumping on point because uh, it has it fills you in on what happened in the past issues. And it's just, this issue is a lot of Kitty Pride and Star-Lord and what's going on with them. And them going to, like, attack this prison planet and uh, just a bunch of back and forth that was really, really good. Got Silk number six. I really wish that we could get Stacy Lee back on art, but if we can't get Stacy Lee back on art, I like Ford's art enough on this book. Thompson's story is just amazing. I mean, I've loved it since I very first started reading Silk, you know, so um, I, I can't hate on this book. I really, really enjoy it. I can't wait to go into the Women of Spider-Verse thing that's coming up, 
because I'm interested to see what's going on. They've been working Spider-Woman in a little more in this book. So I'll be curious about Spider-Woman. I would like to see some Spider-Gwen because I haven't read Spider-Gwen since the start of the last series. So, you know, that'll be pretty cool to see. But that issue was really good. Read uh, Mockingbird number one. Um, this was hilarious. I don't know a lot about Mockingbird. The only Mockingbird that I've been exposed to really has been in Silk. And this was not the same character. Uh, it kind of said in the back of this that this was only going to be five issues. And that it was going to be some kind of like, you know, crazy puzzle thing going on. So I'd be really interested to read this and see what's going to happen there. Got Black Widow number one. Um, there wasn't a lot of actual words in this book. Crazy good action. The art in the book uh, was just off the charts. Love the freaking art in this book and the way that everything was just like one huge action scene and flash page. You didn't really need a bunch of words to understand what was going on. At the beginning of the book, like on the first page or whatever, it basically tells you that Black Widow is now a enemy of S.H.I.E.L.D. And so everything after that is just a bunch of fighting and explosions and was really, really good. And uh, really, really liked this Scotty Young variant. Um, I also got the regular cover uh, that Chris Shammy did that was really, really good also, but I really liked that Scotty Young cover. Captain Marvel number three. I can't believe how much I'm enjoying this book. I've never read any Captain Marvel until uh, Secret Wars, and I really enjoyed her in that. I'm really enjoying this book. Um, I've been reading some Fantastic Four that uh, of the uh, John Byrne run that uh, Miss Marvel's also in that. That was really, really good, and so I'm kind of interested to go back maybe and check out this character. You know, anybody that's uh, read her in the past, uh, you know, just kind of give me a heads up on um, how close to this character this is. And I love Chris Anka's art in that book. Uh, Scarlet Witch. I like this issue art-wise better than I've liked the issues uh, in the last couple of issues. Uh, Robinson's story continues to just be great. It's the reason I continue to read this book and will continue to read this book is how good that the story is on this. But And the covers also. I really love the covers on this book. But um, the art styles, man, just keep getting me. Got Patsy Walker Hellcat. This is just funny. Every time that I read it, um, I love the art on this book. Uh, I love Kate Leaf's story on this book. I believe from what I saw in previews that Kate Leaf is no longer going to be doing Hellcat after like issue 7. So I may stop reading it at that point. But I, I mean I just crazy enjoyed everything about this. Brittany Williams that did the covers and some of the art on Jim does the art on this. And I'm just, man, super good book. From uh, Image... I read Mimetic, the first issue of the third series of Roche Limit. Um, like I say, man, I really, really liked the first Roche Limit. The second one was pretty good. This one kind of picks up a little bit where the first one was going on and was just, man, so good. Empty Zone. Uh, number six, start of a new arc on Empty Zone. Picking up exactly where it left off. The art on this wasn't, to me, as solid. Or wasn't what I liked on the, on the first Empty Zone stuff. But the story was really good. Um, the first story on Empty Zone, it took a lot of issues for you to really get what was going on with the story. And with that one, you just jump right in and know what's going on. Um, got Huck. Number five, really, really interested to see what's going on with Huck. I don't think that this is going to be an ongoing. I think that it's got a limited amount of issues that are left. And can't wait to see how they wrap this story up because it's just, to me, it's been so good. 
Raphael Albuquerque's art's been great. Uh, Mark Millar's story has been great. Um, got starved. Really like the start of this new arc and what's going on with that. Outcast continues to just be amazing. Um, Beauty, really enjoying this. Um, can't wait to, you know, get to run into Jeremy Hahn and see, you know, pick his brain a little bit on what's going on with Beauty. Really like that series. I got Elasticator, number one. This was a really, really weird book that was not what I was expecting, but not bad at all. I got Turncoat number one, which uh, is written by the guy that did Arcadia. And I kind of on Twitter gave the guy that did Arcadia a little bit of crap. And he's like, man, you know, you should check out Turncoat. What I realized reading Turncoat is that sometimes it's good to take a chance and put a story out there that you believe in that maybe might not be the best story ever but it's a it's a unique story arcadia was a unique story turncoat is a really unique story i like the fact that i mean basically this is like uh the tv show or the movie v where you had these aliens that took over you had a human that betrayed the aliens and basically got them kicked off the planet and so you know now um it's just kind of dealing with the aftermath and once again i mean much like arcadia i am really really interested to see exactly where that story is going to go it had a really interesting art style the art style was a lot like uh they're not like us or something like that which was you know really nice uh lantern city number 11 one more series of lantern city or one more issue of lantern city really curious to see how this how they're going to wrap this up in one issue because there's just been so much building up um it's basically i think going to be just a huge battle because this issue was the start of the battle that's going to end it all i'm curious whether or not he's going to get his son and his wife back who's going to be the last man standing amongst the people that want to take over lantern city um really really can't wait to read issue 12 on that and to go back and get it in trade and read the whole thing again. Black Bag, number five. Uh, Black Bag, one of the best things that is out there that I'm reading, man. Just like this story, female assassin that is just one of the most competent assassins ever. So, you know, yeah, that's, uh, it's just great, man. Coming out from Legendary Comics, uh, it's written by Chris Robinson that did iZombie. Uh, J.B. Batos uh, doing the art on this book and the art on this book and the coloring on this book I believe is by Matthew Wilson is just, man it's just all in all, man, just great um, I made a couple of random pickups I picked up the Hip Hop cover finally on Silk Number 1, love this cover uh, one of my favorite covers happy that I could pick it up I got a uh, Detective Comics number 577 uh, signed by Todd McFarland who does the cover and a certificate of authenticity on that which is awesome. Um, I got uh, Batman 410 which is the uh, first Jason Todd in Batman costume. I got 442 which is the first Tim Drake in costume, and I love this cover. Uh, and then, last but not least, from uh, my buddy J Rocks, I picked up Volume 1 and Volume 2 on the Bendis run of Daredevil in hardcover, which is awesome. He gave me a great deal on that, and uh, yeah, about all I got to say about that, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get off here. I'll talk to y'all later.